Hi friends, in this session let's move on to the next task that is archiving our source files. So once the loading has been completed, we have to archive these files into a separate location. Otherwise, when we rerun the package, it again considers the same files and it creates a lot of issues like duplicates and all, right? So once the processing has been completed, it's an important step to include archiving these files into a separate location so that we will not lose if something has been loaded incorrectly into the database or something missed, we can also go back to the archive files and we can verify the data whether we have data in there or what the actual issues we got in the source files right so in this session let's go and design another task for archiving these source files once processing has been completed processing means loading has been completed so let's plan how to design this task so i want to archive these let's say we are receiving these files on a daily basis and so I want to archive these files per day, per date basis, right? I want to create a folder with the process date. Let's say we are loading today. So it creates a new folder like YYMMDD folder, and then it moves these files. So let's go ahead and design this task in our SS package. The task that supports for this is file system task. So this is the task we use to move files from one location to another location, delete, drop, create, folder, and all file system based tasks, we use this file system task. So drag that inside for each loop container, and I wanna execute this for after we load the data into table, after it loads the data into table. So let's map precedence constraint to file, file system task, and then open file system task and go to the operation. So first task that I want to use this file system task is I want to create a folder in the target location, right? Or in any other location. So I want to create a folder. That is, I want to create a new folder if it doesn't exist. Create directory and then use directory if exists. Yes, I want to use directory if exists. True. And then let's define the source connection. For source connection, I want to use a variable. So in order to use a variable, I have to create a variable for the path I need, right? So let's uh, OK for now and then go to variables and then click create new variable and then here uh, archive folder path, folder path. And then change that to string here and then go to expressions and then and then I want to append backslash for one backslash we have to enter double black slash here in the expression, then only it considers, it shows backslash here, one backslash here, and then I wanna create yyyymmdd format. So for that, you have to choose, so yyyy, so that means year part. So year part comes like year of get date. So, but the value the variable is string and the concatenated string is string, but the year of year of get date returns a numeric value. So that's why we have to convert that to a NVARCAT type that is DTWSTR. And I want four characters, right? So let's evaluate. So it shows year part. And then after year part, I have, I need month part. So for month part, can use month of get date, month of get date. But so here again, I want to convert that as string, evaluate. So it is showing seven, but I want to have zero seven. Instead of single seven, I want to make it similar format naming convention for all the folder names like four characters for year and uh, month two characters and then date two characters so for that let's uh, use write of append zero character to month and then use comma two it means it first appends zero that means when it has a single character like seven it appends zero to the left 
to the 7 and then it use write of 2 so when it gets single character it gives it appends 0 to that character when it gets double character like 11 12 like that then it appends 0 to the actual month but it takes only the right of two characters that means when we get 12 month then 0 1 2 then take it takes right two characters that is 1 2 so choose evaluate so it gives 0 7 now copy this and then paste again and change that to date copy now it shows that so we have created a variable to point to that archive folder path directory right so now reuse that in here true and then source variable is our newly created variable that is archive folder path now click ok so we have created this it creates a new directory right now let's create archive directory if not exists otherwise you can also have can create folder if not exists so the next task after this archive folder creation is move files into that archive folder so which is again a file system task so let's drag file system task inside for each loop container again and map the precision constraint from create archive folder and then open file system task and go to operation as move file and then choose your source path variable mm, yeah I want to use I don't want to use variable here because I want to show you a different way approach to do this so instead of choosing a variable here I want to choose source connection so I um, let me create a source connection and then yes I want to move existing file and choose browse to your file and then select your source file path and click open All right so now let's uh, click ok so notice here I'm it is the static connection we have to change it to expression later now click ok so it has created a new file connection here right and then go to destination connection properties override destination i want to if file already exists in the archive folder i want to overwrite and then the variable yes i want to use a variable that we created and then destination variable as archive folder path right so now go to now click ok now rename that to move files to archive folder and then go to the file connection here expressions property and then the connection string becomes like so here again I want to make it dynamic so in order to make it dynamic the connection that we can use is target file connection so it shows our zip file and so let me make that to replace like we have like we did in one of the previous tasks let's rename to gz to empty string so csv so it's pointing to csv now click ok now ok so let me rename it to a um, generic name that is archive source connection okay now let's execute so before we execute let's delete all the files again and let's truncate our table again now go ahead to our package and re-execute so let's go back to our target location so it first downloads and then it extracts the file and loads into loads into table and then moves into archive folder so package execution completed successfully and all the source files moved into archive folder right so i want to move the zip files as well into archive folder so let's go here again and stop the execution and then let's drag file system task again 
and then let's uh, follow the same so is source path variable yes i want to i can use source path as variable because we have a variable that has the target source connection right that is target for target file connection so we can reuse this target file connection here right so let's uh, choose this true and then destination is archive sorry not this so destination path variable yes and then destination variable is archive folder path so we have mapped it now click ok now rename this to move zip source zip file otherwise you can also write it as archive zip files now save it now go back here and then if you want you can delete again and then execute the package again So all files are loaded, so moved into archive folder. So package execution has been completed successfully, right? So this is how we design the package. So we have not completed this project yet. We have just created workflow to load the files into our target location and archive files. We have now just completed our basic task in our project. And then after this, we have to handle exception handling and also how to deploy we have to plan deployment and we have to plan and design what if we receive changes and what are the areas to check and reuse connections from the deployment configuration file or environment variables so all these we have to handle so let's see these steps in the next session thanks for watching my video